Since he was four years old, George Barnett has been fascinated by white-tailed deer. And today, George still stalks his elusive prey with a great deal of success. He shot over 2,000 deer. His work has appeared on over 700 national magazine covers, books, calendars, and advertisements. At his 21-acre outdoor studio, Image Ranch, George has developed a unique environment devoted exclusively to creating custom photography that meets the needs of the outdoor industry. Well, we basically we set up a uh, an outdoor studio. It's uh, 20 acres of habitat. Looks like different parts of the country depending on which area. How do you build an outdoor studio? With a lot of planning and hard work. Basically, what we'll do is we'll go in one year and we'll decide how we want things to look. Um, maybe take a couple of trees out. We may want some color. Bring in some sumac. We'll build uh, water sets. We'll actually go out there with a tractor and build us a little area where they'll hold water so we can make a small pond, maybe a, a little creek. Since we're in there all year working, the deer are accustomed to this, and they're very curious animals. Um, and usually after we get through building a set, the first thing they want to do is come over and investigate it. So the best time for us to shoot is just right after we put it up. One of the questions people often ask Barnett is, why go to all that trouble? Why not shoot them in the wild? Working in the wild with animals is extremely difficult to do. You have to be around animals that are acclimated to humans. Uh, this is something that most people don't understand, that, aren't in, that, that don't uh, work in the photography field. We do shoot wild animals, don't get me wrong. It's fun, but we also have to make a living. And wildlife photography is an area that you make money by shooting a lot of pictures. I mean a lot. A good day of work is uh, 500 to 1,000 images. When you're working on wild animals, they hear that camera running. You're only going to get four or five shots and they're gone. They're not going to stand around and look at you. So most of the places I go, they're national parks, a lot of state parks, uh, some wildlife refuges, or just areas where... There are animals that live that are, for one reason or another, they're not being hunted, and they're accustomed to seeing people. While building sets and maintaining the grounds are time-consuming, it's not the hardest or most expensive part of the job. It's a tremendous amount of time taking care of the animals. Um, I, I probably have the most spoiled animals you've ever seen in your life. They get veterinary care. They've got uh, specialized diets. We try and keep those animals as healthy as they can possibly be. They're allowed to roam through that area and do whatever they want to do. We like for a deer to be a deer, but we want him to be a healthy deer. And George Barnett has found Pennington to be a trusted partner in maintaining his animals. About four or five years ago, this area uh, where the facility is, uh, we entered a, a horrible drought. You, you couldn't irrigate anything, you couldn't get anything to grow at all. It was just, it just turned into a wasteland. Uh, and the animals were suffering from it because uh, that you don't want to just feed them uh, uh, pelleted food all the time. You want them out there grazing and, uh, and eating natural stuff. And we put the Pennington Extreme into that area. Um, hit it with a little bit of water with irrigation time to time, maybe once every two weeks. Uh, and in about two months time, uh, that particular food plot was about six foot tall. Um, we had soybeans and peas, different types of beans, different types of peas, um, other types of forages that are in that particular product. Uh, and and it, it was wonderful. Whenever we, uh, we got the thing up and got the plants mature and we could put the deer in, let them go into that area to, to forage, uh, they had all the feed that they, they could eat. So this, this was a product that, that worked very, very well for us under these drought conditions. Uh, we've introduced uh, the Durana clover in some of the areas. Uh, it's also very heat tolerant, and it's done very well. These mixes that we're putting in, they'll have six, seven, eight, nine types of peas and beans and other types of forages that the deer and other wildlife, turkeys, quail, well, we have a lot of wild birds come in does songbirds abound in those areas if you want to photograph songbirds they're all over the place the Pennington extreme was one of the best products uh, that we've used 
uh, under the, the conditions that uh, we, we currently have, which is a, a pretty bad drought. And for Barnett, it wasn't just the quality of the products, but the level of service and support that Pennington provided. It was unusual to get somebody on site. It's, it's, uh, uh, we, we do have other people come on site, biologists and things like that. Uh, but I, that was kind of a neat experience. Uh, this guy really did know his stuff. Uh, he, had a, uh, he had a degree in what he was talking about, so he wasn't a salesman. Um, uh, he, he was a biologist, and he was able to come out and actually look at some of the soils that, that we were having problems uh, cultivating any type of plants in and, and make some recommendations based upon that. For George Barnett, the bottom line is pretty simple. We want to have healthy animals that are productive animals that, that look their very best. With the weather conditions that we've had over the last four to five years, Pennington Extreme helped us with that tremendously.